Good morning and welcome to this second Sunday of our August Reflections uh, on the Gospel reading from the lectionary coming from the benefice of St George and St John in Newbury. And today we continue with what we started looking at last Sunday, which is uh, from chapter 6 of John's Gospel, with an extended uh, reflection on Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. We'll begin with a prayer. Gracious and loving God, be with us now as we gather on this day of resurrection. Fill our hearts with longing for you. Open our minds, our eyes, our ears, and our hearts as we explore together your word for us, your living word revealed in Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's begin by hearing the Gospel reading. So this is from John chapter 6. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me. And I will raise that person up upon the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So bread, whether it's flat bread from the Middle East or sliced hovis from down the road, bread is a staple food in many parts of the world and has been for millennia. It's an ancient food. In English, traditionally, um, bread has been called the staff of life. You've probably heard that phrase, the staff of life. Um, I suppose alluding to the sense in which bread, like um, staple foods in other parts of the world, like rice or pasta, is not a luxury. It's um, a basic necessity. It's the kind of foundational building block of traditional diets. So bread as the staff of life um, points to the sense in which bread is basic sustenance. It kind of props us up, holds us together as a kind of walking stick or staff might help anyone to keep going on a weary journey. And the point is, um, biblically, that when we talk about the staff of life, the bread of life, a sustaining life, Um, This is what the Bible is pointing to. And more than this, it's underlining that this basic necessity for life, that everything that we need for for, um, being propped up and keeping going, 
is from God. God is the giver of bread. God is the giver of life. God is the essence of the staff of life that is essential for human beings. That's the first thing we need to know about bread as we reflect today. And as far as the scriptures are concerned, we are to be thankful to God for life. Bread is symbolic of this gift. Bread for our bodies, bread for our souls. And this is an important starting point because so much of how we organise our lives and our thought processes is as if we're in charge of everything and that we are the great providers. But when we listen and reflect to biblical teaching around bread, it is this reminder that everything is a gift um, provided and sustained by uh, God, Creator and Redeemer. So when we think about John chapter 6, and we hear Jesus say, I am the bread of life, Jesus is making an extraordinary claim about his relationship, his identity, as being part of God. I am, as Gary said last week, is the great I am, one of the great I am sayings of John's Gospel, one of seven, but goes right back to the whole biblical story of Yahweh. I am who I am. And when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, this is um, a huge claim to be part of God and part of the great gift of God sharing God's life uh, in the world and with the world. And of course, when Jesus um, taught his disciples um, to pray, um, he gave them the prayer which Christians have been praying for 2,000 years since with the central sentence of give us this day our daily bread. Again, reinforcing this sense in which everything that we receive is a gift from God. Bread for sustenance, our staff of life. And we notice in that prayer, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, um, give us our daily bread, the word our. It would be a mean little prayer has been pointed out by many people before if it was give me my. So embedded in that prayer and in this whole discussion about the sharing of God's life as represented in, in the bread is this sense in which it is incumbent upon us to know that we are sharing in God's life and to see our lives as something which is shared our need for bread is not to be at the expense of the needs of the bread for others, the mutual flourishing, uh, the mutual nourishment of all people. But of course in the Bible, bread stands for more, much more, than simply the provision of a daily calorie intake. Bread sustains physical life, that's true, and in none of this must we forget that of course we cannot pray for people's spiritual nourishing while their stomachs are empty. The two are to be held together. But when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, he's talking about more than um, God's provision of um, physical life. And he's alluding to something about who we are as um, spiritual beings, body, mind and soul. As God constantly reminded the Israelites um, with the story of um, the manna in the wilderness and as Jesus reminded his disciples, man, people, uh, man does not live by bread alone. There is a deeper nourishment needed. There is bread which sustains spiritual life which does for our spirit what wheat and bread does for our body. And God is the giver of this whole life, what is called eternal life, which is not about um, a quantity of life, but a quality of life. Here and now, as well as um, in the future, eternal life 
is this abundant life, life in all its fullness, body, mind and soul, where all people flourish through the goodness and the provision and the sharing in God's life. And the point that Jesus is making is that Jesus is part of how this life is opened up and shared. And so it's not surprising, is it, that at the end of Jesus' earthly life, as he gathered in the upper room with his disciples, not actually chronicled in John's Gospel, but we know from the others, that bread should be part of this ritual element which um, was um, inaugurated on that night before he died in the upper room and has become the lifeblood, really, of the church um, down the centuries. After supper, he took the bread. Now, of course, this was, you know, the bread on the Passover table. He took the bread, which was reminding him and his fellow Jews of the um, bread of the Passover, commemorating the great day when God brought Israel out of slavery in Egypt. But when he took the bread into his hands, he was taking simple, ordinary bread, a common thing, familiar, the staff of life, but um, elevating it or um, transforming its meaning into a whole depth of understanding around how this bread um, represented his body, God's life shared with human beings in all their frailty to open up the whole of God's life um, for us. And he broke the bread. And to break the bread in the culture of the ancient world was to invite people to enter into a new relationship. Breaking of bread at the table was about company with bread. Um, you would do this uh, as extended to neighbours, but travellers, um, even strangers. And in that single action, as Jesus broke the bread, he was creating a new family, extending the table, if you like, um, to the whole of humanity. And I know for myself and for you and, and for um, Christians all around the world, this breaking of bread together uh, we know and feel to be a lifeblood of our relationship with God and with one another. So he gave them something to eat and invested it with new meaning. I am the bread of life said Jesus. I am part of God. I am part of how life is nourished in human beings. And as we reflect today um, on these words of Jesus and on the place of um, bread for our bodies, bread for our souls, let us reflect uh, in our intercessions now as we pray for the church and for the world that although Jesus says you shall not live by bread alone man cannot live by bread alone people do actually need physical bread um, to survive and can we offer people the bread of heaven spiritual nourishment if they do not even yet have the bread of physical life. So there's this double injunction that we are to care practically for the needs of others, for the poor, for justice, for care of the planet. And we are to share um, these deeper things about our physical and spiritual life for mutual flourishing and well-being, eternal life, abundant life, lived fully with God. So let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, feed your church with your gifts, with your gifts of faith and love, 
of self-sacrifice and service. Feed us that we may share your nourishment with a hungry world. Help us to grow ever more into your likeness and share your good gifts. We pray for the church in these difficult times. We can't help but think today of how many have been unable to receive communion and how we have had to draw deeply to be able to hold body and soul together as we deal with and continue to deal with the effects of pandemic. But today we pray most of all for those who are suffering the most. Those today who can't feed their children. Those today who feel cut off and forgotten. Inspire us to ever greater closeness to you that we may go widely into the world. Bringing your transform transformation and your life. Lord, we are hungry. Bread of heaven, feed us. Jesus, bread of life, sustain our life with your gift of sufficient food and water. Forgive us our greed and our waste which keeps others hungry. Help us each day to know in our own choices when enough is enough. To limit our consumption, to share what we have. We pray for the work of our local food bank here in West Berkshire and particularly throughout Newbury and the Thatcham area. We give thanks for all the volunteers and for the generous donations. We pray especially for the current initiative to support families where um, there are no longer school dinners provided during the school holidays. So Jesus, bread of life, bless the work of aid agencies, charities and trade justice movements and prick our consciences so that we live more simply, so that others may simply live. Lord, we are hungry. Bread of heaven, feed us. Jesus, bread of life, be with all who are weary and exhausted. Strengthen and uphold any who are suffering. We remember before you those known to us who are ill in any kind of way. Bring comfort and healing we ask. Lord, we are hungry. Bread of heaven, feed us. Jesus, bread of life, restore in us the gift of your eternal life. Hear our prayer as we remember those who have died. Grant us to share with them in the eternal banquet of your love. Let us join together by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us depart with a blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.